when it comes to early civilizations, ancient Greece is the one that exceeds above all others. And while it's credited as being the start of everything from Western democracy to philosophical thought, it goes without saying that the Grecians believed in a multitude of strange things. So what are some of the peculiar habits that were normal back then? And what on earth was the thinking behind them? For all this and more, stay tuned. First of all, let's talk about the way the Greeks diagnosed their patients. Despite being one of the best early civilizations in the history of the world, the ancient Greeks still knew next to nothing about medicine. More often than not, the treatment of an ailment was considered to be a shot in the dark, with many physicians relying on thoughts and prayers to get their patients through tough times. Remember, this was a culture who believed that everything was being determined by the day-to-day -day lives of their gods. So praying to Asclepius, the Greek god of healing, was a natural thing for physicians to do. But then Hippocrates came along and changed medicine for the better. He believed that the gods had blessed humanity with the tools to save one another, and as such, relied on the skills he had to bring modern medicine to the fore. Ever heard of the Hippocratic Oath? Believe it or not, but that originated with old Hippocrates. One thing that Greek physicians used to do on the daily to diagnose patients was incredibly strange though. They came to believe that the taste of bodily fluids held the truth to where certain ailments originated from, and so they would often taste the earwax of their patients in an attempt to come to terms with what was wrong with them. In the end, this wasn't completely false, considering how doctors still test our bodily fluid samples to find out more about what's troubling us, but they certainly draw the line at testing them with their tongues. The citizens of ancient Greece also believed in the literal oils of champions. For those of you who don't know, the early civilization was also responsible for the creation of what we now know to be the Olympic Games. But back then, things were a little bit different. First of all, women were barred from competing alongside the male champions, all of whom had to strip down until they were butt naked before they could participate in any event. The celebrities were then asked to oil themselves up with a variety of oils that were often mixed specifically for them. Whether they were running, wrestling, or just standing there looking pretty, the Olympic athletes were doing it as naked and slippery as the day they were born. Worse yet, since all the events took place in the dirt, at the end of a session would see these athletes covered from head to toe in blood, sweat, and literal pieces of dirt. These materials were then collected by slaves who would bottle them up and sell them on to the citizens of the civilization. What could they possibly want these concoctions for? Well, according to their beliefs, these concoctions could either heal them from a selection of ailments or act as performance-enhancing drugs that would give them the skills of the athletes in question. And by the sound of things, the majority of ancient Greeks bought bottles like this by the truckload in an attempt to become the next big celebrity athlete on the scene. Pretty embarrassing if you really think about it. Wait until you hear about their bathroom antics, though, as this is where things get really tough. Back in the times of ancient Greece, toilet paper wasn't a thing, and because of this, the population had to find a way to clean themselves without having to take a bath each and every lavatory visit. The wealthiest citizens had a great time and treated themselves to sea sponges that had been attached to the ends of sticks. This served the same purpose as toilet paper and allowed them to live their lives in a way that we would still consider to be relatively normal, even though we wouldn't have a great time washing our own backside sponges. The rest of the population weren't as lucky as their rich counterparts, though. More often than not, they had to wipe with just about anything they could find, and since leaves were often within reach, there were usually a collection of stones made available for those who needed to clean up after doing their business. Suffice to say, this made for a rather rough bathroom trip and ensured that the poorest of Grecians had harder-than-nails backsides that would have put any of us to shame. It must also be noted that these stones weren't without a price. They were made specifically for bathroom antics and, as such, fetched a pretty penny. There was even a saying in the Greek world to back this up, namely, three stones are enough to wipe, and we thought the recent toilet paper shortage was bad. Ancient Greece was also one of the worst places to live if you were a woman. Although females in early Mesopotamia, India, and Egypt enjoyed both equal rights and opportunities to their male counterparts, this was something to be desired in ancient Greece. In fact, women were treated as second-class citizens, beating only the likes of slaves when compared to the hierarchical ladder of social status. The men of ancient Greece actually believed that women were incredibly susceptible to the impure which is what made them far less equal than their husbands or potential suitors. Doctors at the time also believed that there were certain ailments that only women could suffer from, ailments that could only be treated in some of the worst possible ways. Suffering from a discharge of sorts because it's that time of the month? Well then, you best go and pick up your mixture of roast mule excrement coupled with wine. This little concoction had to be consumed until the discharge had come to an end, which usually took a few days. Due to the lack of medical prowess in society, natural abortions were also a common occurrence. 
And when this happened, the woman was cured of her body's injustice by covering it in cow dung. You see, they believed that the womb moved around the body, and since abortions only happened when this took place, the smelly cow dung would coach the womb back into its usual place. Oh, and don't even get us started on their best form of contraception, which was nothing more than a few sneezes. The age gap between men and women was also far from normal. This is, unfortunately, something that could be found in many ancient cultures, as a result of citizens not living long enough to have children in their late 20s or early 30s. And since sex was somewhat expected between a man and a wife back then, you can imagine just how young women were married off to men. According to reports, the average Grecian woman would marry her significant other between the age of 12 and 14. Not exactly surprising, considering that's when women found themselves able to bear children for the first time. What separated ancient Greece from other cultures that encouraged teenage marriage is the ages of the men that these young girls were often being married to. The average man would marry between the age of 30 and 35, making them more than double the age of their young brides. Suffice to say, this is something that we're glad society has never adopted as normal, as we have no doubt these young women would have wanted a different life if they had an opportunity to change it. But as we said, back then, women were treated far differently than men, and as such, there wasn't much they could do about their circumstances. It's just strange that they operated this way, as Aphrodite, the goddess of sexual love and beauty, was by far the oldest god of them all. So why they would think their wives should be drastically younger than them, we have no idea. Last but not least, let's talk about the parties thrown by the ancient Greeks. Unlike today's world, which sees us partying for a variety of different reasons, there was only one notion behind a rager in ancient Greece, and that was to pay homage to Dionysius, the Greek god of harvest, fertility, and all things festivity. But it's how they paid homage to this god that really turned their parties up to a hundred. According to reports, the best way to give thanks and worship Dionysus was to make sure that there was a suitable amount of phalluses on display, and by that, we mean ornaments of the male appendage. He was the Greek god of fertility after all. Once a year, the men and women of ancient Greece would actually travel down the main road carrying as many phalli as they could in an attempt to appease Dionysius, something that our parents would very much shun us for doing today. And there you have it, some of the strangest things people forget to mention about ancient Greece. What do you think of the way Grecians used to live their lives, though? And are you happier to have been born in our time? Feel free to let us know in the comments section down below.